Hello, Mark and I are here today to perform a walk around and discuss the features and benefits of our new 816. So Mark, before we actually start talking about the 816, tell me a little bit more about how long we've been producing the 816 model. It's almost 50 years now. Our very first landfill compactor we produced was the 816, which is the same nomenclature as we are now. Uh, we started building this in 1972. And leading into that, in 1972, we came straight into this blade. That's how old and how proven this is. It's still in production and the number one working tool for this model machine. As you can see, it's straight, it smooths out all of the trash, makes it a level surface for easy compaction. Um, if you want an alternative blade, we do offer them through what we call our cat work tools group. So it wouldn't come from the factory. You could order without a blade out of the factory and have a U-blade or a semi-U-blade or even a tilt-rotate blade delivered to the dealer and installed on the machine, depending on your application and your needs. It's been working perfect for us ever since, and what's proven, we keep. Sounds good. Well, why don't we get over and start talking about the wheels? Yeah, that's great. So, Mark, we have four different wheel options that Caterpillar offers. We have the plus tip, we have the paddle tip, we have the chopper wheels, and we have the combo wheel that you see here that has pluses and paddles. I know customers that would that love, love to pulverize and crush material like construction and demolition material, C and D, so they would choose an all plus tip wheel. Correct. But why would a customer choose a paddle tip wheel or the combo wheel? The paddle tip is a straight tip. It's aggressive, it's narrow, it's got an I-beam shape, so material won't stick to it as like it would a smooth surface. So vibration and centrifugal force will kick off the clay, the mud, and sticky material. And plus it's got great traction. So you wanna use this when you're going in a straight line. It doesn't have a, a big side slope uh, stability profile to it where our plus tip does. So up and down hills, a lot of moisture material or chopping is needed to open up the bags and everything. This is a lightweight, very high productive tip. The machine will go at its fastest speed throughout the day if it's on the lightest tip possible. The plus tip you already covered, that's the big tip. This is a heavy tip. This will slow the machine down a little bit if it was all plus. But it's got great stability. This is like the rudder on a ship. It's easy to steer the machine and to hold it in a straight line on a slope. Plus it does have some tractive capability. It's a big heavy tip that lasts longer than the lightweight. But because of that, it slows you down a little bit. It could slow you down as much as a quarter mile an hour. Now, that's hard to see, but a quarter of a mile an hour over a 10 hour day, that's two and a half miles. Right. So that adds up over a week, over a month, over a year. That's a lot of distance. So a customer really needs to understand the trade-offs between a heavy tip, a light tip, or a combination, which this wheel is. We put the high production performance tips in the middle yep. for good traction and keep the weight down a little. And we put the stability, the big plus tips out on the outer row and the inner row. Okay. And then we also have a chopper blade. That's just kind of like a burn to shape blade. That's really needed in really wet, sticky material or wet material so much that for the additional traction, I should say. So Mark, I guess the, the next question would be, when these tips wear out, what type of warranty does Caterpillar offer? And then when they do wear out, what options does a customer have? Should they buy new? Should they look at refurbishing them, rebuilding them? Mm -hmm. what, what do we have to offer them? You know, that's a great question, Travis. Um, these tips that you're looking at here, whether it's a paddle or a plus, are 10,000 hour prorated warranty. All right, that's the way it's always been. Uh, we maintain our warranty even if it doesn't last. I say that this will wear out a little quicker. It's still got a 10,000 hour warranty. This one might last you 12,000 hours, but it's a 10,000 hour warranty. When they wear down, not if, but when they wear down, our wheels are designed for two tip lives, for 20,000 hours basically. You can see we have a hard face weld on the inner edge and the outer edge of the diameter. So when these wear out, we we have an alliance with an outside company called M Squared Industries. They work very closely with us. Uh, they provide proprietary Caterpillar parts to a customer through a dealership. It's called M Squared uh, Industries out of uh, Indiana. They will provide you with a re exchange wheel. So when this wears out, 
All the customer has to do is remove the wheel, put it on a truck and send it back, all four wheels, and they, they ship you first the four wheels. Right. So when you take these off, it's like a pit stop. You pull the four wheels off, you put the new four wheels back on it, and you send these back to M Squared Industries for a core return. So these are still valuable to you. They can recore them and send them on to the next supplier or the next customer. Next, uh, next option. Yeah. The other option is you can remove them yourself. They're weld on, they're only welded on the front and the rear. So you remove that, you get the new tip, and you clock it. This here surface in between the tips is worn out now or it's worn down. So you take a new tip and you put it on the old surface. So you clock all the tips, rotate right. it. And that way you have a brand new surface that this has been protecting. And you put the new tip to protect the worn out surface. So when the second life tip wears out, you have an even worn out skin and it's time to replace just the skin, keeping again the core. All right, Mark. Well. Thanks for the uh, detailed explanation about our wheels, but let's get into this component here, which we call a striker bar. Correct. Tell me a little more about it. Behind the front wheels and behind the rear wheels of this machine, we have a striker bar. And this is meant to, when these plates pick up debris, it could pick up a 55 gallon drum or a barrel or a stump or four by four. As it's coming up, these bars are situated around the wheels to knock that debris down to prevent it from going over or, or any kind of damage up on the handrails or the platform. They're strategically placed uh, to prevent damage to the machine. Right. So, other than the striker bars, you know what I'm going to ask about next, right? Yes, I do. It's the thing that's most dear to your heart. Uh, I'm coming, Lord, I'm coming. Cleaner fingers. <laughs> Cleaner fingers, yes. Tell me more about them. Okay, we, on our machines, we strategically locate the tips on the wheel to keep a wide open space, but to still have as much tractive capability as possible. The big opening, the weight of the material, the mass, centrifugal force, and vibration we'll clean the tips out, we'll clean the wheels because we don't have any pinch points on these wheels. However, if you get into mud, you get into clay or gumbo type material, anything that'll stick to Teflon will stick to the steel also and then that doesn't work. So what we offer out of the factory is what we call our cleaner fingers. Now they're bolt-on fingers that would go on top of this bar or with this bar and they actually come into the wheel and pry out the sticky material so you still have all your tractive effort and your uh, surface exposed on the tips. The one negative thing about these cleaner fingers is because we have a mechanical powertrain and all of the power is going all the way out to the tips from the transmission through steel. So there's really no give. You can't relieve pressure like you would on a hydrostatic drive. So the fingers have to become the fuse. And these things are so powerful that a lot of operators around the world think that they become shredders or cutters. So if you get into steel cable or shipping rope or barge rope, they think these fingers will actually shear that, cut it. Or a mattress, they'll think they're shredders. Carpeting, they'll think they're shredders, and that is not the case. They're not meant to be cutters and shredders, and that will cause them to fail. But they have to fail again to prevent failure inside our axle housings into our powertrain and have a catastrophic failure go throughout the, the system. Right, so I guess what I would say is when a customer is unsure about needing cleaning fingers, they should probably reach out to the dealer so they can reach out to the product application specialist like ourselves to come out and perform a site assessment to see if those fingers are needed. Absolutely. Uh, do not go get fingers just because another manufacturer has to have cleaner fingers due to their tip layout that you absolutely, material gets plugged in there and it has to be pried out. We designed the self-cleaning wheels for a reason to prevent the, the, the failures. Right. So yes, call your dealer, get people involved that can work with you in your environment you're in. And we can decide whether you really need the fingers. We have to really work with your operators to make sure they understand these things are not shredders and cutters and everything will be fine. 
Well, Mark, let's get over here and start talking about the protective guarding that we offer to protect some of the components on our machine. Now, landfill compactors work in some severe conditions, some of the most severe in any industry. Yeah. So tell me more about how we protect our components with the type of guarding we offer. Uh, great, I will do that. As you can see, for example, this is the hydraulic tank underneath this. This is heavy duty iron. This is armor plating. And wherever material might climb the machine, we try to angle it to deflect the energy away from the machine so it doesn't absorb it, keep the machine productive, not use up any energy or fuel burn. Everything comes in, hits the armor, ejects away back out into the landfill. Um, the hydraulic tank, because it is behind the armor, we have to have a sight gauge, very visible. I mean, you can see that. Should you need to fill the hydraulic oil up, you climb the ladder up here and up on top is a filler tube. You lift up the little platform and fill it up, come back down the ladder. Here on the rear, the same as the front, the rear we have the deflector, heavy duty steel plate to deflect the material that might be climbing up, protect the cab, protect the operator, and deflect the material out. So Mark, are there any other areas we should discuss on this side of the machine? Well, yes there is. You can see up here on top of the platform on the side of the cab, we have our HVAC system all on the outside. We have a turbine pre-cleaner that actually spins clean the material, the environment, uh, or the dust that's coming in from the environment, pre-filter it, and then run it in through another filter, the standard filter, and pressurize the cab. All that is easily accessible right through this little case up on top, and the windshield wiper fluid is also up there. And you can see there's a sight gauge exposed up there for you. Well, Mark, since you mentioned about the cab air filters, let's talk about the engine air filter and what we did to improve it on the 816. That's good. Good time for that. Behind the service door right there used to be the mailbox style filter that we would pull out that we had throughout the K series. We went back to the radial filter because we wanted to extend the life of the filter itself. We've got a pre cleaner up on top, a turbine pre cleaner a secondary filter, the, the Optimax in the middle, and then now we went back to the rotary air filter. So it's 360 degrees of the paper filters of the past. It's getting us to the first full life that we expect and that our customers expect. That sounds like a great quality improvement on our machines. Let's talk a little bit more about the quality improvement we made on the hood and closure doors and what we did to, uh, to stiffen those up. Oh yeah, great idea. Um, these doors, uh, every now and then, as I was saying about the striker bar, if the striker bar misses something climbing up, a lot of times it was hitting these service doors and knocking them off. So we went through and we beefed it up. We got a more robust framing around it. And then this hockey stick frame on the bottom, we really strengthened. We put deflectors in. Again, we're about deflecting the energy that's climbing up on these machines and pushing it away without absorbing energy into our structures, into the machine. Uh, and it just keeps it more productive and long and lasting. So Mark, as we move our way to the rear of the machine, let's talk a little bit more about our cooling package. The cooling package is totally different than most of the heavy equipment Caterpillar produces. It is a waste resistant cooling package. To start with, we have the scoop because we bring air in, but we don't want to bring fresh air in down low. So we scoop it out and we put the screens up on top to bring the air in as high as we can and fresh air. Enclosed in here, we have our cores. We open up this hinge door for very easy access. We're looking inside, you can see all the cores are six fins per inch, which means they're wide spaced. So if dust can get through the screen, it can actually go through the radiator core and not plug it up. So Mark, we are introducing the uh, a reversing fan for the 816 now. Can you tell us a little bit more about the reversing fan, how it works, and what type of customers should look at that for us, uh, an option? Yep, I will do that. With this model, this new model here, we now have a reversing fan optional. Uh, if a customer is working into an area where it's excessive dust, uh, a dry climate or even a moist climate, um, but the debris just never seems to go away. 
instead, if it gets plugged up there, the fan will actually reverse the fins and blow the air out, cleaning off the screen. If we have department store, those lightweight bags up here, right. it'll blow that away for better suction inside. And anything that's stuck on the cores will reverse flow. It reverses the flow and the velocity comes, reverses and comes back out. Mark, that was a great summary about our cooling package and the reversing fan, but let's talk a little bit more about these doors sure. and how we can use them to inspect. Yep. Well, we just showed you how to inspect from the side, but to get in the front of the, to just a quick look to see in front of the fan, we have this here inspection door and then this one along with it in case you don't want to go back there. So you can see behind the cooler cores that you've seen from the rear and then in front where the fan actually is in the front of the radiator. And we put this guard here to prevent people from doing what I'm trying to do is stick my hand in there. So it, there's safety factor in there, but it still allows full pass inspection. Coming down here, we have our DEF filler tube. Again, sealed to keep the environment out of there. A, a sealed cap, it's not vented. The remote vent was inside of the cooling package in there, protected. So all of that is for keeping it clean, keeping it con the contamination out. And then here we have our service center door. Inside of here we have our master disconnect. This here switch right here, that's the fuel shutoff for emergency shutdown. The jump start receptacle, in case the battery's over run dead. You can jump start it with the, with the mating batteries. We have a battery reset and another reset down here. This here light here, that's the purge light. That light allows the system to purge when you shut the key off. If that light is off, you can turn your master disconnect off. If that purge light is on, it means it's still pulling the def out of the lines. And it wants to be dry and empty before you shut off the master disconnect to keep everything clean. You could tell that Caterpillar is really, they really care about service and maintenance. So let's talk a little bit about more about the smooth belly guards that we have on, on the bottom of the machine to help with maintenance activities. Absolutely, perfectly stated and good time. The bottom of our engine, because of our powertrain, our axles, the drive shafts and everything, allow, uh, it doesn't allow for a total sealed surface on the bottom like a boat. Our rear axle oscillates in up and down so what we've done is we've totally smoothed out the bottom gone around it and sealed it up but we have access doors down there so you remove a few bolts and it's hinged and it comes down so you can get in there for inspection maintenance or cleaning out the engine right. compartment and then we also have one under the transmission and then up in front under the the fuel tank to allow access to the steering cylinders and the bottom of the fuel tank all of them on hinges. That sounds good. Now, as you mentioned, the rear oscillating axle, let's talk about the largest differentiator of our of cat landfill compactors. Without a doubt, it's the mechanical powertrain. We have a power shift transmission, a torque converter, steel drive shafts going to the differentials, which is all steel, pushing the axle shafts out to the steel final drives, turning the planetaries, the ring gear, the final drives, all the way down to the steel tips. Everything on a mechanical powertrain is steel pushing steel pushing steel all the way down to the tips. That is where the power comes from. All heavy equipment that has a four-wheel drive system, regardless of the brand name, is a mechanical powertrain system with the exception of a few landfill compactors out there that happen to be hydrostatic. That is our value. The weight of this machine comes from the structure itself. There's no ballasting. Uh, we don't add weight to the wheels. We don't add weight to the blade. It's in the transmission, the torque converter, the steel drive train, the axle shafts. It's all value and it's all rebuildable for second and third lives. We still have machines built in 1970s that are still out there running today. That's a great summary. It really tells me and our customers that the mechanical powertrain is a very superior design. So let's talk a little bit more about the powertrain and how we protect our axles and the dual cone seals. Well, we have an axle guard system. Uh, because the wheels are turning and we have these cleats on the wheels, that tends to pick debris up and it can actually come be rotating around forward and reverse and work its way in around the axles. 
So we have an axle guard system that is part of the wheel and actually in a welded on or mounted on labyrinth system. So the wheel's turning inside a labyrinth system. If material gets around it, it turns with the wheel. It doesn't bind up really right. tight and strong. But also, I mentioned before about an alliance with M Squared Industries. We now have access to what we call the cleat guard. And that's a, a debris dam on the inner row of the wheels. And it's, it prevents material from actually going in and falling down. It hits that wall and comes back out. It goes back into the landfill where it came from, gets compacted down and rests. So we prevent all that axle wrapping. That's a great summary, Mark. And I was going to ask you a little bit more about that cleat guard, but you led me right, you led right into it. So thanks for that. I might want to add that the mechanical powertrain on this, um, it's nothing new. This has been around ever since the Dead Sea was sick. It's a long uh, time. Oh, it's been around. It's been available. It really was the only powertrain system out there. Again, name your brand. Well, Mark, now that we've covered this area of the machine, let's go over to the main access into the cab and talk a little bit more about that area. Well, Mark, here we are at the main access part of the machine, but before we actually talk about that, let's uh, draw our attention over to the articulation area and talk how we make it easy for customers to access some of our key maintenance points. It's a great time to do that. That's a good point. Here in the center of the machine in our articulation area, we have all of our greasers right here. So the service technician or the operator, whoever's going to grease the machine, the daily maintenance, can come up, hit all 10 points in the center of the machine without walking around. Can be done with that, can step on the heavy duty step here, and go right up to the filler tube right here for the fuel. Easy access, hold on arms. Well, Mark, that was a great summary of this area of the machine. Now, I did notice that we put our AC condenser up on top of the cab. Can you tell, why, tell us why Caterpillar does that? That's a great point. You're very observant. Years ago, we took out the condenser for the air conditioner of the engine compartment. We removed it. Because the fans reverse, it blows hot air back through it. Sometimes it would fog up the windows inside. But it was hard to keep the cab air conditioned on a hot, sunny day. So by removing the condenser out of the engine compartment, placing it up on the roof, it's high away from the debris, keeping it clean, the freshest air possible for a landfill, and then it's self-contained motors for the fans to blow the, the air through the condenser up there. Now, since we're talking about the cab, let's come down to the window guard. Yes, that's a good, good point. Uh, this here, we call it, I, I tend to call it, the face mask. Uh, you watch American football and you notice the helmets they wear and the face mask. It doesn't block their visibility, but it protects their face. Well, this protects the windows in the same way. We keep it small, the bars keep material from going through it and breaking the windows, but the visibility is still excellent for the operator. And when you put a screen over the window, sometimes the sun comes in and deflects and you get shadows. A lot of operators get headaches or their vision gets blurred and they get fatigued easier. Right. This way they got the full clean window and perfect visibility. Speaking of the window, let's talk about the rubber mounted uh, glass. All of our windows are now rubber mounted. We've gone away from the previous versions of bonded glass. Because window breakage is prevalent in the landfill industry from material climbing up and breaking it, right. this is low tolerance cut glass that zips in a rubber seal and pushes in and seals. So we call it the zip in, zip out cab, the window. Well, that's a great summary of the external portion of the cab. And I think we finished our external walk around. Is there anything else you want to point out uh, from an external standpoint? Well, before we go up into the cab, I'd like to point out how heavy duty steps we got. Um, because we're in the landfill environment, a lot of heavy equipment, they will put on tubing steps. So that gets ripped away within a week. So we have this thick, plated, heavy duty, bolted on top and bottom step. This thing will be here as long as the machine is running, the step stays put there. Well, that sounds good. Why don't we head up into the cab and talk a little bit more about the, the best cab in the industry. I'm ready. So Mark, first thing I want to point out is one of the improvements we made on stick steering. As you can see here, the stick steering is still on the left-hand joystick place, but what we did was we removed some of the component noise that was coming from the stick steering valve. So it helps lower the in-cab sound so it's a little more comfortable for the operator. So talking about comfort, let's talk a little bit more about the 
general comfort features and the ergonomics of the inside of the cab. Oh, great. And I was wondering why it was so quiet. I noticed that right away. So we quieted down the hissing of the stick steer. Um, just to touch on the stick, the ergonomics of it, it it's all easy. The, the seat is fully adjustable to any size operator, up, down, in, out, recline. Uh, even the armrests and the wrist pads move in and out and up and down. Uh, the stick steer is STIC. It stands for Steering Transmission Integrated Control. I'll show you here. Here you unlock the steering so you don't accidentally move the machine. The steering, right and left. Reverse, neutral, forward, directional change, upshift, downshift, transmission. All integrated into our stick steering. Okay, going over here to the right hand pod, we have our traditional horn button. We have our joystick that raises and lowers the blade. And then over here we have a rocker switch for our throttle lock. We have the set and then back here is resume. So if you happen to hit the brake, you have to resume and it goes back to where it used to be. Let's jump down to the pedals. Okay, the left foot pedal, if enabled, is a decelerator pedal. So if you're using your throttle lock, you can decel the engine RPMs just by the pressure you put on this pedal determines the engine RPMs. If it's disabled, it's a transmission neutralizer and a brake all the way through. The center pedal is a traditional brake pedal, and then the right, of course, is the accelerator. So jumping over here, we have the parking brake, disabled, enabled. Here we have our hydraulic system lockout, disabled, enabled. To the right of it is our ignition system, the key. Here we have our soft touch keypad. If there's no lights, nothing's enabled. If the light is on, something gets enabled. For example, that button there, I just touch it, the green light comes on, and it shows up here that we enabled the left foot pedal decel pedal. There the left decel pedal is disabled. Throttle lock enabled. Throttle lock disabled. Here on this machine, we have heated mirrors. That turns on the heated mirrors turns off the heated mirrors. We have the light controls the brightness of the control monitors, the brightness, and then this is the help button. We press the help button and then press anything else and it says the heated mirrors turn on. Press the help button, press the light button. It's the backlight dimmer to control the cab backlighting intensity. Press the help button, use to enable throttle lock. So it's all right here, easily accessible. Moving on up, we have our lights. We have our HVAC system, whether it's on automatic or you can manually control the fan speed. You can control your temperature, hot, cold on the hot, and you can set it on auto so it knows the temperature, or you can go manual. And there's the air conditioner manual. Up here you have the rear wiper, and here you have the front wiper. Moving on over, this here monitor here is your rear vision system. The camera located on the back of the machine, so when you reverse, you can see exactly everything behind you. And you can see this here screen is our optional cat compaction system, uh, GPS technology that I'm gonna let Travis Schwartz talk about now. All right, well, thanks, Mark. So what I wanna talk a little bit more about is our technology offerings uh, for cat compact. So, this is what we call our CV460 display. This is the interface that operators will use to help manage the working face with the type of technology offerings that we offer. And there's two different options for CAT Compact. The first is a lower tier option, which we call our onboard pass mapping system. This is where an operator can see in real time the locations the machine has been and how many passes they have completed on the working face. The number of passes that are, is configurable, but usually are set with four passes as default. The other option that we have available is a more advanced option that not only has onboard pass mapping, but also equipped with our CAT Compaction Algorithm, or CCA. This is a form of elevation mapping where an operator can see in real time when a layer is actually compacted and then can move on to the next section of the working face. The nice thing about this option is all that information can then be transferred to the back office suite of VisionLink where man landfill managers can analyze the data and understand the trends of the compaction. 
This will lead to further opportunities of increasing, increasing efficiency and productivity of the 816. So when a landfill actually uses these type of technologies, they can see a huge improvement in their compaction densities. With the lower tier option, they can see up to a 6% improvement, and with the advanced option, they can see anywhere from 12% to 18% on average in compaction densities. This is a huge return for a landfill, and can definitely, the return on investment can be done in less than a year to less than six months. So in closing, Caterpillar has been manufacturing the 816 for almost 50 years. As we just pointed out during the walk around, you can see we continue to make improvements to the 816 model. I'm Travis Schwark. And I'm Mark Welch. We're excited to get this machine in production, in your hands, to help you absolutely crush, crush it. it.